18,000 years ago, massive glaciers locked one third of the land on Earth in their icy grip. These rivers of ice gouged their way through mountains, smashed boulders to bits, and scoured areas of the Earth flat. Then temperatures began to rise. The glaciers began to retreat, exposing a changed landscape. Glaciers helped form the lakes and rich soil of the Midwest, the fjords and peaks of Patagonia, and Yosemite Valley in California. Here, the glacier bulldozed its way through the mountains, carved out a U-shaped valley, and left behind sheer cliffs like Half Dome. A glacier begins when snow begins to fall faster than it melts. As the snow accumulates weight, it compresses. The light, fluffy crystals turn into fern, a dense, grainy ice. As years go by, the weight of accumulated snow on top increases. The ice begins to move under its own weight. No speeding tickets here. The glacier moves under one inch per day. The bottom layer, slowed by the ground, moves less than the top. The strain cracks the ice, creating giant crevasses. Warming at the end of the last ice age reduced the Earth's glaciers, but it didn't get rid of them. Today, more than one-tenth of the land is still covered in ice and that ice holds a wealth of information. Scientist Keith Eckelmeyer measures Columbia Glacier in Alaska yearly in order to get a jump on global climate trends. Columbia has retreated eight miles from its terminal moraine, the pile of rubble left at the end of the glacier. As it shrinks, it calves huge icebergs off into the sea. No one knows for sure whether this is from global warming or just part of the natural cycle of temperature and ice. By studying air trapped in the ice, researchers reveal the history of Earth's climate and look past the current warmth for clues to the next ice age.